Hey guys, Postron here, and today let's talk about Wintertide brand in a league starting scenario. Now, we basically tested this build all the way up to Cyrus, and um, we set ourselves a budget, which was free Exalted. We did not want to get above free Exalted, and if you look, look at the gear, I'll show you in a second. The only expensive, expensive thing is a plus two tabby, which goes for around about 40 to 50 C on day two. And I kind of want to put a disclaimer here right at the start because this is not me recommending you a skill or this is not me telling you what to play for 3.17. It's too early for that. We have no info. I have no patch notes. I don't know about the bosses. I don't know about the leak, right? So disclaimer here, this is just exploring a skill. And then basically, um, I want to kind of basically just test it out and once the patch notes are out you kind of have a feeling and when you see changes you know oh this is going to be good for the skill this is going to be bad for the skill this will kill this build it's not viable anymore or maybe oh this build is now all of a sudden good if you never try out a skill and it doesn't matter under what context 3.16 3.15 you do not know what you're getting into at all you will not even know what changes do so this is basically what this is out for also, obviously, since GGG kind of expanded the waiting time, we have to wait two more weeks for the league. I wanted to do something in between, so I thought maybe I'd share it here with you. Now, one of the things I want to make clear is that while these are not league start videos, like I said, I will update. I will make a update video with all of the builds that I am going to test over the coming weeks. So this is just the first of many, and then I'm going to make a big update video where you can just go to the skill that you want. This is going to be after the patch notes. And I will going to say, is this going to how this is going to affect that skill? So if you want that info, this is going to be out right after the patch notes are available. Um, now, as for what my leak start testing is going to entail, you can check me out on twitch.tv slash palstron. We're doing all of this live. If you want to chill out or you just want just want to check out some boss fights, right? With all of these leak starters, then definitely check me out. Number one, this is a cold dot build. Wintertide is a cold dot, and we're gonna look at it here real quick creates a magical brand which can attach to a nearby enemy dealing cold damage over time and chilling them number one thing you might know want to know is that this chill is actually not related to the hit which means you can support it with elemental focus and it will still chill and that is basically just because elemental focus kind of just makes it so the skill cannot apply on hit right but if it has inherent chill it will still work other than that we have it periodically activates while attached, gaining stages that raise the damage. So what this basically means, uh, you can best see in your PUB right here, you have the hit rate of this spell. And the hit rate is basically just, you have here, activates every 0.25 seconds while attached, and increases and reductions to cast speed also apply to the skill's activation frequency, which means that with, right now we have like 70 something cast speed, this will actually gain like seven to eight stages every second. So what this also means is the longer the brand is up, the more damage it will deal. So if you just place a, a brand here, at the very first, at the start, it won't deal as much damage as at the end of its duration right here. When it ends the duration is where it's going to have the most damage. So what you want to do is your playstyle, you want to Throw down as many brands as you can. I think right now for me, that's five, yeah. And then you go for brand recall and you just recall them to you. Now here's the next pack. You just recall them until they run out and then you just summon them again over and over. This is how you have the most amount of damage. So it basically means that cast speed or duration actually increases the duration. And uh, all you want to do is you want to get it to 20 stages reliably. Now you can see this in your POB on the left side. Activations per brand. If this is over 20, you're good. If you have a helm enchant for plus four stages, you will actually have to get to 24, uh, although I don't really know if that's necessary. But basically, if this is less than 20, you should kind of be alarmed because you want to get to maximum procs. Now, in terms of what the real DPS of this is, it is kind of hard to tell. So if you can see right here, I have a little bit in here, which we're going to talk about in a second. But if you look at this, it's like 500k per brand per second, right? Total DPS. Now, the thing is, this is per brand. Now, funnily enough, if you do include in full DPS and you have like three brands, it does not change the dot, but it does stack. So the thing about Wintertide is it has inherently two brands, and then you get one extra from the passive tree from Runebinder here. And uh, basically, so this should times free the damage, but that's not quite how it works. It also has like a stage where it has to build up. So what did we settle at in the end? I talked about this with Shaq Central, um, and he basically told me that all the cold dot aficionados out there kind of decided that this kind of like Winter Tide brand deals 180% more damage. Now, if it was really three times the damage, it would be obviously 200% more damage. So it's not actually as much as I thought. It's a little bit less. It's not quite 
times three. So if you want to approximate the kind of damage. Now, the thing about cold dots is obviously that you can stack multiple. It's like a chaos dot build. You can stack like Bane on top of Essence Drain and whatnot. But for cold dots, we have two other things that are really important to do. Number one, Vortex. Now, this does a ton of damage just as a one link alone right this is our left click this will basically auto cast every time it's up on cooldown this has like a cooldown a one second cooldown to be exact and um we're only using it right now for cursing and that is basically because occultist is very reliant on its curses and winter tide does not count as hit so we need to get it somewhere and um obviously if you had two rings one with Ellie Week, one with Frostbite, sure, but at the kind of cost that we set at, at the budget that we set at, it's just not feasible. So we have uh, Vortex with Hex Touch, and then Ellie Week and Frostbite. But basically, mechanically, there isn't really much more to say about Vortex. But what I have to say is that Cold Snap and especially Val Cold Snap really surprised me. Now, as for Cold Snap, this is basically just a dot that on kill grants you frenzy charges so let's see that real quick if i press q uh sorry if i press f2 over there this is cold snap that you just saw and we got some frenzy charges for it um so nothing special there it also has a cooldown so you can't press it as often but cold snap isn't really the important part the important part is actually val cold snap which gives you frenzy charges against bosses which is number one very huge but let's see what this also does so if i press w this actually stays around me so if you've ever played a poison build this might remind you of something like a Plague Bearer, which obviously it doesn't have the same amount of duration. It's a Vol skill, so it's not going to be as up as much. But I can tell you that while mapping, this is actually extremely cozy to have up. Uh, let's just show you that again real quick. And this was the number one thing I was surprised about. You can just rush through everything around you dies. This deals a ton of damage. So this plus um, the Vortex, plus the Wintertide brand, which is most of your damage, and then a Frost Bomb will provide you with the most amount of damage. Now, besides scaling your damage massively, Wintertide brand is on not only an opportunity for Cold Dot to increase its damage uh, dr drastically, it is also a way better playstyle than trying to rely on Vortex, simply because you don't have to be melee, number one, and number two, you can be way more on the go. You have this totem playstyle that most people just love, right? You place something down and you move and everything behind you dies. You can also place it in front and once you're there, everything is going to be dead and you can loot. You can also like open a bridge, everything's going to die, you can loot the spinthers. All that jazz can be achieved with the brand playstyle that you couldn't really do with Vortex. It also gives you another layer of damage and this actually does quite a bit of damage. Now what I will say is that if you're used to trappers or miners at league start that is not what a cold dot build will give you i will say right now that the damage is kind of all right it is definitely nothing to be talked about but everything always being chilled around you is extremely good for defenses and the brand playstyle is extremely cozy all right to show you how this build does like i said now i'm round about on 3x of investment that there is no real catch to this this is basically a plus two tabby a few rare things there's nothing that could like shoot up in price like crazy um, so there's no real risk involved here by me saying it's round about 3x. Uh, the only thing could be like a taste of hate, which is only um, defensively. So uh, yeah, this is like Awakener 8 um, Conqueror. This is a Baron. So let's show you how the mapping actually looks like. Now, um, the thing about the buttons is basically your main button is the Wintertide brand. This will be your main damage source. And on your left click, there is the Vortex. Now in this setup here, Vortex is only there to double curse, which might be kind of a waste. Um, Definitely something we want to look at. Uh, if you can afford uh, LE, one LE week and one frostbite ring, you can just uh, curse with it any, anyways and just go for damage links instead for the vortex. But in this budget, it doesn't really fit into. We would also have to sacrifice quite a bit of life because we would also be losing the percentage life from the implicit because getting vermilion rings on top of curse on hit is basically impossible. Now, other than that, so this is basically your left click. This is your winter type brands that you summon. You also have brand recall, so the brands come to you. And in general, you want to work with brand recall because the longer your brands stay up, the more damage they will do. Uh, you also have frost bomb, which you basically only place at bosses um no, uh, and then you also have your shield charge which we have with foster attack so it's actually kind of comfy uh for mapping um one thing you also have is Val cold snap i will show you that in a second cold snap itself i don't really press a lot but you can also do it um it's another dot that stacks on top but let's really quickly uh show you how this actually plays so you put down some brands and you just keep moving right it's kind of a very similar to what a 
totem place that would be. Now let's show let's show you um, Valkorsen up here for a bit. So this is basically like a plague bearer that has like uh, an AOE around you. So you can go through here. I'm not even doing anything. It's only the dot that swirls around you. And what this dot also does is it gives you frenzy charges. And not only does it give you frenzy charges on kill, it also gives you frenzy charges uh, when against bosses because. With Cold Snap, you have to kill stuff to get Frenzy Charges, but with the Val Cold Snap, you do not. So, um, this is a little bit of a pesky boss. We might actually die if we're not um, careful here, but I will quickly activate all my stuff. Let's see if we die or not. So, the damage is, like, pretty alright for a leak starter. It's definitely nothing crazy. Let's just bait him here real quick until he does his thing. Alright, there it is. You can see it's very nice. This is also one of the advantages of um, being able to um, stack damage on your brands instead of your vortex is just that vortex is a lot more dangerous of a playstyle you always have to refresh it go back to the boss in whereas the brands just do what they do no matter where you are let's qu real quickly see how the bearing goes once again a8 I shall cast you into a pit all right time this one correctly Gotta wait a little until we get the um, ball cold snap up. Alright. Now we're gonna wait a little. So as you can see, the damage is pretty alright for a leak starting scenario. Very comfy. Overall, I got some frenzy chargers from the dot. From the ball cold snap. And now we're just... Trying to not get drained completely here. It's a little bit of a weird scenario. We might actually die. Yeah, we died once. <laughs> Feels bad. All right. Go back in. As for auras, I think I didn't talk about this yet. We have Summon Skitterbots, Malevolence, and Tempest Shield. Unfortunately, there, the spell block did not hit. We have, I think right now, 50% chance to block. No, 44%. Okay. Let's go back in. Let's see how this goes again. And uh, that was a little bit stupid. We didn't get our brands down. Maybe now. Okay. Now we're just going to wait a little. As you can see here, if you were a Vortex build, you would be completely screwed. But since we aren't, we're fine. We're kind of going to run out of uh, life flasks here, which is a little bit annoying. Let's just wait this out. And I think we can finish him right now. Or we get destroyed. We'll see. Yep, we're fine. There it is. That's basically the fight. Now, obviously, most of your Conquerors will not be on 8 stones. You can also always remove it if it's too hard. Now, overall, what I will say is that um, in terms of mapping, I think this is very, very cozy, especially since your shield charge speed is actually quite remarkable. But as you can see here, the boss damage really isn't anything special. But overall, as an all-rounder build, I don't mind it, uh, but it will depend on how hard the new bosses are actually going to be. So I hope this could kind of um, give you a little bit of a hint on how this build actually plays. As for Ascendancy, I chose the Occultist. Now, there are some versions out there that actually go Inquisitor for the huge region that you get, and I kind of think it's a good choice, um, especially since Occultist might actually be on the chopping block for Nurse next league. Uh, but overall, I just felt like this is a lot cozier. Number one, <clears throat> we not everything is always cursed. Uh, so Profane Bloom doesn't really do that much. I chose uh, to go against it. Uh, now, the must-have nodes in this order are first Void Beacon for the minus 20 Cold Res. Then you go Frigid Wake. This is huge. Not only do you get 10% reduced damage from enemies, you also get Cannot Be Chilled, Cannot Be Frozen, 15% more Cold Damage. Then as uh, the third nodes, you go for Malediction. Malediction makes it so you take 10% less damage and they take 10% more damage. And then the last few points... Uh, if you want to be a little bit more energy shield focused, like kind of a hybrid setup, you can go Vile Bastion. It's definitely possible. You just need to get the right basis. You will probably have to get a Val Regalia instead of a Tabula to even make this worth. Maybe even run Discipline and cut some of the other auras. Um, and then for the last points, I just went for with Withering Presence. And the only reason for this is basically 60% Chaos Res at Leak Start are kind of premium. They're really hard to come by because you need so many things from your gear and you don't have much currency to invest into them. The good items aren't out yet. 
Um, also, it makes it so nearby enemies uh, deal 15% reduced damage over time if you can somehow hinder them, but it's mostly about the Chaos Res. Now, if you want to try out an Inquisitor, not really much changes. Um, the number one thing that would change is uh, you would not have to put an emphasis on curses at all. Number one, you only have to get one curse on hit ring. And number two, you would not have to, like, I don't know, do the setup here. Because with one curse and you don't have malediction, right? So it's not important that every enemy gets cursed. You can get away with just having, like, maybe hex touch on your frost bomb or something like that. You can get away with it. Um, so that would definitely change. Number two, I mean, from the starting area, all that would happen is this would go here, right? If you want to go Inquisitor, you probably want to go for a hybrid setup, though. So you have to focus more on actually getting Energy Shield gear to get the most out of your Consecrated Ground region. Uh, but other than that, definitely you can also try it on as, as an Inquisitor. Personally, I feel like right now, um, Occultist is better. But like I said, it could be on the chopping blocks for nerfs. So once again, for the gear, one of the most important things when testing for a League Start is setting realistic item expectations. And that means that it's the end of the league, right? I could buy a tabby with plus two right now for 15C, but at league start, that's completely different. At league start, that's going to be 40 to 50C. Also, an exalt right now is like 160C, but at league start, an exalt is like 70, 60 chaos, right? So you have to think about all these things and not kind of like trick yourself into believing a build is good. And then you have a rude awakening at league start. So that's why we have a very strict policy here. Most things are either self-crafted, rares, the only exception is going to be a tabby. Now, as for tabby, uh, since Wintertide brand has both an AOE tag and a duration tag, this can be a plus two to AOE or duration, whatever you want, right? Um, other than that, we made these rings ourselves. Now you can obviously just buy a better ring, but I really wanted the implicit here. It is kind of hard to push your HP with a tabby. And um, the thing is, if I wanted to have a good six link, I would have to go for an astral plate and probably pay like 1.5x in divination cards to actually get a six link, right? Um, if I want a carcass jack six link, I mean, we're talking about like five exalts, right? So um, I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So we crafted these vermilion rings. We basically just... Um, threw on some cold damage essences, the screaming ones, uh, which are going to be less than a chaos usually at leak start until we hit something decent and then we craft it on life. Here we hit a little bit of life and we have this. Th you could do way better than this, obviously. Now, as for helmet, we didn't go for the plus four stages, which would probably be GG. We went for the winter bright uh, tight brand damage which is a little bit worse just to make it a little bit more realistic we crafted this one with screaming essences of greed and this is something you will see in a lot of my videos screaming essences of greed at leak start are huge don't go for shrieking don't go for deafenings they're too expensive go for screamings um, so that's how you can make this we got some spell suppression on here nothing really crazy as for wand this one should usually cost you around 20 to 30 chaos at leak start. Do note that the crit multi, it looks good, but the crit multi and the cold damage to spells doesn't do anything for us. So does the mana. So this is basically just cold dot, cast speed, and plus one, right? Um, then we have the shield, which is basically just plus one, a little bit of spell damage, and some life, which is cute. Um, other than that, if we look at the Emmy right here, this Emmy is just damage over time multiplier, a little bit of strength, and then crafted life uh, to fix everything up. As for movement speed, you can't really go for much here. If you want 30 movement speed at leak start, uh, you're not going to get anything fancy. T2 life, a resist. That's basically it. Now, obviously, if you want a boot enchant, you would probably want the movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. Then we have these gloves. These are probably among the best that we got. We actually rolled into this ourselves, uh, but this one would probably cost you like 15C at leak start. Probably not worth it, to be honest. It's just like 12 cold on multi, but whatever. And as for your belt, obviously a Stygian Vice would be the best, uh, but then you would have to roll it yourselves because a Stygian Vice with T1 life at leak start can get quite expensive. I actually really, really wanted the reduced flash charges used. I think this makes your flask um, usage a lot more cozy. Talking about gem setups, uh, I already talked about it. I have a Wintertide brand setup um, with efficacy, alley focus, swift deflection, inspiration, and hypothermia. Number one thing I will say here is if you can get at least a Empower 3, remove the swift affliction. The less duration is actually really, really bad, but it's too much of a more multiplier, like 40% more is just crazy. And there's nothing really to do there other than that. You can maybe do like, I don't know. I don't even know what you would put there. Basically, it's just empower. Everything else would be too bad. Now, other than that, I personally already talked about this, but I'm using Vortex to um, curse. And the only reason for that is because um, having good curse stuff, like uh, more...
As for my Vortex setup, usually if I had the currency, I would go for an LE Weakness Ring and a Frostbite Ring. The thing is, um, I could also put these curses somewhere else because obviously you're going to think, okay, on Vortex, I want more damage multipliers because Vortex has a lot of damage, right? So this seems kind of wasted, but <clears throat> using Vortex for curse application kind of makes sense because as an occultist, you always want to have your curses up. You do not want to put it on like a frost bomb that's only up against bosses. You always want to have this up because you always want to have malediction on enemies. And also since we have so much increased curse effect, these curses will just help you quite a bit not only against bosses so i think overall it's worth it you're gonna lose a little bit of damage by not having not kind of not having a four link vortex overall i feel like it's worth it as for vile cold snap this is definitely worth actually scaling because not only do you get frenzy charges you also get sort of this um this plague bear effect around you where you can just shield charge and everything around you dies so definitely go for damage on that um as for auras we have uh number one oh yeah we have brand recall with arcane search basically just put it on the right level so it's always activated when you press it once um we have tempest shield which is one of our auras the other auras um, I think our skitter bots and then yeah skitter bots and then we have malevolence we also have a one link frost bomb you can all look at this in the pob down below and shield charge with faster attacks um, obviously as for cost when damage taken we have a uh, steel skin with cost when damage taken because you don't really have a way to get endurance charges although this might change once you get a cluster jewel setup with like enduring composure as for the passive tree i actually went for zero jewels for this version i'm really going for um as budget as possible to make it as realistic as possible and um one of the things that you just don't want to do is um have to have like two medium clusters one large cluster that's just that's a pretty big commitment right so if you can um reduce that commitment the um, shadow area over there is basically what we take instead of this setup um, which still has a ton of good stuff also more aoe uh, but let's talk about it here basically what we're looking out for is getting as much life as possible while still having a little bit of spell block here now we can't get too much but um so we're not going for a full glancing blow setup what i will say is that if you want to go glancing blows and like sanctuary you obviously obviously want to go for a um life gained on block um shield right which would mean you would probably not get plus one it will mean you're probably not not going to get too much spell damage but it would make you a ton uh, like a lot thank you right um as for block all we're taking is basically uh arcane guarding here with the block attack damage per five percent chance to block on the equipped shield so this basically means for example here we have 37 that means that we get per five we get one percent so we get seven percent extra block just from one point then we have safeguard here which gives you 50 energy shield when you block spell damage which is nice together with the block mastery here which gives us three percent spell damage per five percent chance to block um uh block spell damage also really really good now the most important thing is you have to get both of the brand clusters number one brand equity means you can get an additional two brands you could also get this from the mastery but we don't have the space because we can only get two masteries and the number one important mastery is the brands attached to a new enemy each time they activate no more than once every 0.3 seconds once you have this your brands will go around like crazy while clearing which will help you a ton especially coupled with the brand attachment range which is nowadays pretty hard to get on the tree you would have to get it from like cluster jewels or other stuff but um yeah this mastery is basically a no-brainer this mastery is a no-brainer so the other masteries are very hard to reach um this is like a crit cluster and there is no other brand clusters that's basically it um, other than that, we definitely want to go for sovereignty plus the increased mana reservation efficiency. Um, if you don't know how to get all your auras, you probably forgot these notes. Um, other than that, we're going for cold damage, cold damage over time multiplier. Spell damage also applies and cast speed makes it so your brand gets stages faster. So those are also very important. At any point, if you have problem with mana, you can always go for deep thoughts and then go for the 10% reduced mana cost of skills. Very, very nice to have as well. Um, so after we're finished here, we're taking Breath of Rhyme, which is huge. Uh, we're taking Heart of Ice. As for the Cold Mastery, you can take the Cold Exposure, gives an extra minus five Cold Res, but it's only really up against bosses because we have it, we only have exposure on frost bomb so it's not huge i wouldn't really fret it overall these monsters are really really bad um so yeah do that as you will now in terms of aoe 
I tend to go for Ar Arcane Expense here because this basically gives us 30 AoE plus 20 spell damage. The reason you will not see me take Amplify is because area damage does not increase the damage. It does not increase damage over time. So you cannot go for Amplify here. If you took these three nodes, it would just be 30 AoE, like 10 per. This area damage does nothing, just so you know. Um, other than that, we go here. The damage over time master is huge. Every bit of skill effect duration that you can get is really, really important because we cannot go down here to these. We cannot get exceptional performance um, or potency of will. We also cannot get the 10% more skill effect duration. If we wanted to do that, we would have to completely redo the passive tree. And since this has a very awkward position up top, we kind of have to go here because we probably also want the block. This whole region is kind of hard to path down and it's not worth the points. So wherever you can get duration like here um, or from entropy, super important. Now we're ending this here in the shadow region and this is pretty important to actually path here for the decks that you get. Um, Dex is definitely something that you have to kind of make do on your gear, but you can also get like 10 here, 20 here, 10 here, 10 here. It does add up in the end, uh, just pathing here. Um, and something I want to point out here is Blood Drinker is premium tier. You definitely want to go for Blood Drinker. This 2% life on kill will make your, uh, your leveling a lot easier because you are a dot build. You do not have any sort of leech. You have to rely on your life flask. So this 2% life on kill um, will uh, save your life a lot of the time. All right, so the way you want to level this is a setup that I use for basically all my witches and all my inquisitors. Um, you can use, use this longer than level 12, but level 12 is where you can start getting a winter tide. Now, I will tell you my personal opinion of when you should go for it. Uh, but here, just real quickly, um, you start here as a witch. Now, your first setup, you will want Purifying Flame, which is level 1, Holy Flame Totem, which you get at level 4, and then Flame Wall, which you get at level 8. Um, now, what you want to do is you want to path here through the cast speed. It will make everything feel a lot better. You can also go for spell damage. It's going to be a little bit more damage um, and it's going to be easier on your mana, but this will make your spells a lot more flexible. Now, once you have this, in my opinion, the one thing that you should do is you should immediately path here. Now, not really for the reason that you might think. You might think, oh, you wanna, we want to get to the brand nodes immediately. No, but we want to prepare for going for the brand nodes. First up, these nodes here are way too premium to delay them. So you want to go for retribution, which is insane. Discipline and training, like the best life node on the tree. Then you go for Holy Dominion, Light of Divinity, huge. These nodes alone will fix a lot of problems. Also, if you have dex problems, which could definitely happen, right? It will also make your gearing a lot easier. Go for Precision. It's going to be 10 cost speed for 2 points and 20 dex. Huge, right? And now that you have this, you are level 18. And now what I will say is that once you have this cluster you can go for Wintertide Brand. So you can go for Wintertide Brand on level 12 if you want to. I would definitely recommend you only get it after you get this mastery here. It will make clear 100 times better. So this would be level 22 if you get all your quest points um, where you can respec. Then obviously level 23 will be Rune Binder. And now there's a few things you can do. Now, I personally like to go for this brand cluster up here before I go for the aura nodes, but that is kind of up to you. So the way I do it is at this point, I'm winter type brand, right? So these can basically go away. Let's delete them real quickly. So for um, just make it a little bit easier, right? So we have winter type brand, let's say 20 stages, right? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, now we go up through the cold node. So now you're scaling cold dot. So we go up here. Um, as we would, we take the life nodes and then we go all the way here to the cluster. And here we want the 40% brand attachment range. And at this point, your build is basically done in terms of the most basic things you will want for clearing. This is going to be awesome. Now, obviously, once you get the AOE here, the arcane expanse, that's going to make it even better. Right? You could theoretically already spec into these AOE nodes if you wanted to. Try it out. I didn't really feel like it was necessary. Now, we went for this one first. Second, we go for the aura notes here, which are going to be huge. You definitely want to go for purity of elements early, but after you get the um, occultist ascendancy with the cannot be chilled, cannot be frozen, um, now purity doesn't do as much any uh, anymore. So cut the purity of elements for malevolence. Or if you just want a more speedy playstyle or you're like, do this only if you're on softcore. You don't have to go for purity of elements. Then you can go for malevolence instead. Um, so in terms of uh, ascendancy, first void beacon, second frigid wake, 
third malediction these are the most important ones and the chaos res is probably my fourth but as i said if you want to go a little bit more into energy shield dip your toes into that go for vile bastion now that you're here you kind of want to unspec these points here and connect up here because these are only three points and these are one two three four points now obviously if this dex and strength helps you you can delay this but over the next three turns what i would do is take these nodes connect up here and then you can respec one two three four points and now the next thing we're going to go for here is breath of rhyme you want to go through the cold dot nodes here and um you can go for the heart of ice i personally would rush the aoe cluster right here it doesn't matter how you travel but basically i think you want to go it like here and then the next one is going to be snowforged you take the mastery for the 15 percent res this is going to be quite huge um now you can delay the life you can take the life however you want and um, then you're basically in the shadow area already at this point we're level 57 and you can just fill it out as you want i would say that you want to go for blood drinker as soon as possible also you probably want to fill this out very quickly because you kind of need the dex otherwise you will have to take a dex point here a strength point here now what i will also say in terms of skills um obviously vortex just look at the final setup vortex will come in at level 28 val cold snap as soon as you can get a val cold snap uh, i wouldn't really go for cold snap before that it doesn't really do much and yeah later you can fill out the spell them uh, the spell block notes here um you can also not go for the spell block notes and go down here and scale all life if you want to be a little bit safer against for example big fist hits i get it right also we're only level 90 right now so having more passive points would probably also open up a whole cluster jewel so overall i would say my leveling experience was extremely nice um definitely go for this one you can respec later i think that if you want to go into a build that cannot really function before like level 80 winter tide brand is a very nice skill to just go for early you don't have to go all in for anything you don't need any leveling uniques um definitely something i would recommend now a question that comes up a lot when doing leak star testing cold dot builds is usually that people just assume you're going to go energy shield which i personally have to heavily disagree with i'll talk about why now obviously in question here is both pain attunement and ci builds i think they're not really optimal for leak start now before you just start screaming and tell me that i'm living in the past i understand that this is not 2018 anymore you can leak start with ci you can kind of leak start with low life although i would say that needing like a five six link shafts is kind of annoying at leak start but maybe that's just me right um the thing about life is it's just very convenient to play number one you don't need a shafts you don't need a six link vol regalia um, all you can do is just go for a tabby and you can even upgrade to a plus two tabby number one you would not get a plus two on a vol regalia obviously so doing a vol regalia on its own would already lose you like 24 percent of your damage right um, but then on top of that having to go energy shield is going to lose you a lot more damage than just that now this is something i see all the time when comparing kind of energy shield leak starter versus normal life leak starter right which are a lot more cozy to build and i'll just tell you what i mean by this so i'll just give you a comparison between two gloves here the number one would be cold dot gloves for life build right um all you really want here like obviously you would want some random resists right but you want life and you want cold dot now that's pretty easy to do because that life roll for example would be like a crafted life roll so at that point you're talking about basically nothing that you need on here but if you look at energy shield the thing is with life builds is most of your defenses comes from levels you get life per level which is huge and then you stack as much as possible from your gear but if your energy shield everything comes from your gear and from like discipline or whatever right so the problem here is that for example the equivalent to this for energy shield would look like this right if you want to get like 200 energy shield uh, gloves now we're talking about three different prefixes now maybe you can like leave this one out but you're talking about way more than just two rolls here and what usually happens is if we compare this budget to this budget is you would have to remove the cold dot and that is what i mean if you realistically want to go for these you will have to probably sacrifice the cold dot you're not going to get both until you're actually ready to spend a lot more so now we're talking about like eight percent less damage now if this happens on 
multiple gear pieces. We're talking like 20, 30% less damage just from that, not even talking about not having the plus two tabby, which is another 25%. So there is a lot of cost attached to that, but it comes, it, it, there's even more to that. The second big downside of being energy shield, especially leak start, is not having a life flask. And I'm not kidding here. Life flasks, ever since they got reworked, are extremely strong. Now, um, the thing with energy shield builds is you can get region, but it's going to be expensive or you have to abuse certain mechanics. Now, if you're an inquisitor, it's a lot easier than if you're an occultist. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about that, but just having a life flask fix all of that for you. You can even go double life flask. You can go one instant and one that's like slow. Um, will give you so much more flexibility than having to like pull it out because there's some burning ground here or there, or against bosses, you have to play super safe. Um, Honestly, if I cannot use a life flask at leak start, it kind of doesn't feel right to me. Um, but you have to decide for your own. I personally think that life uh, for a leak start like this is um, superior. Now, obviously, I mean, per like exalt spent, right? You're going to get more returns. Obviously, when we're talking like 10, 20, 30 X, we're in a completely different ballpark. So at that point, you can think about respecking into energy shield no question but just for having a little bit more a cozier time to gear i would definitely go for the life version also if you're in a group obviously you know what to do you'll have a lot more currency to play around with but if you're in a scenario like me i would definitely recommend the life version now as for my thoughts about wintertide brand as a whole so here it is right um i think overall cold thoughts are in an okay place right now i don't think they're crazy or anything i think they're a if you're looking for a very safe leak starter this is totally okay. What I really appreciate about a leak starter is um, if it can do on a tabula for as long as possible, right? If it's a plus two tabula, fine, but it can do on a tabby, which you cannot say of some builds that need like a, a shavs or maybe they really want that carcass check because they don't have any other way to get AOE uh, or they need like a Varigalia, um, whatever it might be, soul mantle shaft, whatever it might be, right? This does not need that. So you don't need any like um, staff six linked where you have to socket it into the staff or anything. No, you go tabby and that is it. I really appreciate builds like that. And in terms of gearing, it's just very, very cozy to do. Now, uh, a downside of that is obviously that you will not be scaling this damage into oblivion. If you really want to scale this damage hard, you will have to invest. You will have to go low life with a shavs. You'll have to go probably both hatred and zealotry, um, which might make you a little bit more vulnerable. I will also say that in my opinion, after testing out some of these cold dots, um, if you kind of want a superstar that you want to put in your six link in a cold dot build, I think that is Wintertide brand, in my opinion. Like, I think Vortex is good and all, but Wintertide brand just has the safer playstyle, the more cozy playstyle. It has a lot more damage if you can stack the stages than Vortex does. So that's just my opinion. I think Vortex is kind of a side character in this show and Wintertide brand. If you want to do any sort of cooldown, I think Wintertide brand has to inc be included in there, um, probably as the main dish, so to say. Also, if you're looking for a build to transition out of at like level 80, whatever you need, right? You're playing some weird, I don't know, like custom crit build that doesn't really function before level 80 or before you hit your first 50C to buy a certain unique item. I think Wintertide brand is perfect for that. Do I know if Wintertide brand is going to be perfect for a, I don't know, pushing the new bosses that are going to come in 3.17? I have no idea. It's not the best boss killer. It's kind of an all-rounder with like okay-ish single target damage. But what I think this build really, really excels at is something to transition an occultist out of at like level 80, 85, because this is up like up to level 80. This build is phenomenal. I loved it. But in red maps, you have the same feeling as a toxic rain build, as a poisonous concoction build. Your damage is kind of starting to fall off. But the thing with cold dots is it doesn't really have as many tools as chaos taught to get out of that hole. So yeah, I would say that overall, I think it's an okay build, um, but I would say that it's biggest use is something to transition out of at like level 80, 85 for a different build. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, big shout outs to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. Um, I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much. Please consider pledging. Now, I don't see this often, but for this skill, I will make an exception. Definitely get the Celestial Brand MTX uh, if you want to play the skill. At, it's basically pay to win. It makes the skill a lot prettier. Uh, you can thank me later, but yeah. <laughs> uh, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.